we gather here this afternoon, and Jody made mention of this already, I, I realize how hard it is for, for each of us to gather here today. Um, one of the things that I, I don't know if I do it intentionally or unintentionally, but uh, each year I kind of stand in the back and, you know, you overhear people talking as they walk through the back doors, and you always hear a lot of comments about, wow, that, this is, you know, this is really hard. Uh, it's really difficult, and, and probably for many of you, it's the first time that you've been you know, back in the funeral home here since the, the funeral of, of your loved one. And so, with that in mind, I, I certainly appreciate your willingness to come and you know, spend a little bit of time uh, here this afternoon. As I think about the holidays, you know, we, we often have a number of words that describe how we feel as we gather uh, every holiday season. And some of those words, as we think about Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's, generally are words like thankfulness and merry, cheerful, joy, celebration, get together with families, you know, eating. We think of all of those things. And, and as we think about those things, you know, we look forward to getting together with our family. We look forward to shopping. We look forward to visiting. We look forward to eating. And we look forward to all of those things. And yet I realize as we gather here this afternoon that those things may be the furthest from your mind. You know, your mind may be more filled with things like uh, dread, sadness, depression, joylessness, uncertainty. And I, and I suppose it's safe to say that in many cases, instead of you know, looking forward to the holidays this year, maybe in your mind and your thoughts are more focused on, how am I going to get through the holidays this year? How am I going to get out the other side? And instead of flying by the way they often do, you may be more thinking about, man, they're taking forever. I just wish that we'd get here and get over with it, and, and we, could, we could put this behind us. As I thought about the, the holiday season in light of losing a loved one, I thought, you know, the holidays tend to be like a megaphone. And yet, instead of magnifying voice, they magnify sorrow, and they magnify hurt, and they bring back to the freshness in our minds the, the hurt and the, the pain that we feel and we felt uh, since losing our loved ones. With, with those thoughts in mind uh, this afternoon, I'd like to really do two things. First of all, what I'd like to do this afternoon is, is look at the scriptures for a few minutes, because I believe in the scriptures we find hope, and we find something that we can grab hold of. And so I want to do that first, but then the second thing that I want to do this afternoon is just share a couple of practical ideas, you know, things that you can do during the holiday season. And, and I realize that anything I share, nothing I can share this afternoon is going to take away your grief. Nothing is going to take away the hurt that you feel and the hurt that you're, you're struggling with. And, and I'm not sure it would be a good thing if I could do that, because that grief is part of the process of getting us through this. And so I'm not trying to take away your grief, and I'm not pretending to do that. I'm trying to give something that we can hang on to. Something that will just help us during this, this difficult time of, uh, of our lives. As I said, the first thing that I want to do is look at Scripture. One of my favorite passages of Scripture uh, for a number of years has been found in 1 Peter chapter 1. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3, Peter, who is writing this, says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. I don't know if you noticed as I read that, but Peter, as he's writing those verses, combines two things. He combines hope with grief. He says in, the, in those verses that, that we will be put to grief. We will have sorrow. We will have difficulty. But yet, even in the midst of talking about the difficulty... He says that we can have hope. We can have something to grab a hold of. I often speak of hope, and uh, 
Jody can attest to this, anytime that I, I have a service, I, I always talk about hope. I, I always define hope as something that we can grab a hold of and hang on to. Something that, even in the most difficult times in our lives, won't let us down. And, and you know from your experience in this past year that you can gain a certain amount of hope from your family. And you can gain a certain amount of hope from your friends. And there's little doubt uh, that those that have lost loved ones this year have done that. You've rallied around each other as a family. You've rallied around each other uh, that, that are friends of yours. And you've gained support from that. And you've gained hope from that. And that, that's a great thing. But you also may have experienced in the past year that there's times that that lets you down. There's times that you wish that somebody was there and they just couldn't be there for whatever reason. And so you know that as much hope as you get from that, that there's times that it just isn't enough. And at times it fails. And yet what the Bible talks about when it talks about hope is something that we can grab a hold of that doesn't fail. Something that is always there. Peter in these verses talks about that hope as a living hope. It's something that, that is not just for the future. It's not something that is just a someday thing. It's something that is alive and living right now. And something that we can grab a hold of right now that will help us through our time, as Peter says, of grief. Now Peter also defines what that hope is. Peter says in those verses that I read that that hope is something that goes not only in this life, but goes beyond this life. <coughs> That's why Peter says that the hope that he's talking about is uh, the hope of an inheritance that is incorruptible, that is undefiled, that, that does not fade away, and it's reserved in heaven. It, it's a hope that is a certainty. It's a hope that goes beyond this life. Jesus promised the same thing in John chapter 14. And if you still have your program there, we, we read part of that in, in the litany. Jesus said to his followers, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would, have, I would have told you. And then he says, I think what our hope is. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And, and, and Jesus is saying to his followers that, that heaven is a very real place. And he says that I'm going to go and prepare a place. A place for you, a place for my followers, that I, I will take them to that place. I don't know if this means as much to anybody else as it does to me, but when I, when I read that verse, this is how I like to think about it. How many of us have ever had family or friends or guests come and stay with us? Probably most of us have at some point. What do we do when we know they're coming? We clean. I know what my wife does. She cleans, and she makes the bed, she fluffs the pillow, and she re-cleans, and rechecks and, and, and makes sure everything is just right, because we want it to be special for our guests. Well, in John 14, that's what it says Jesus is doing for us, and for our loved ones. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. You see, Jesus is giving his followers something to grab a hold of, something to hang on to. Something that, that won't fail. And, and with that is the promise that when, when our life here ends, He'll take us to the place that He's prepared for us. And, and so that's the hope that, that Jesus is giving. Jesus also, through John in the book of Revelation, tells us the place that He's preparing is a place that's beyond what we can imagine or understand. It's beyond what our, our, our human brains can, can comprehend. But he paints a little picture of it. And he says it's a place where there's no sorrow. A place where there's no pain. A place where there's no death. A place where people will not be separated again. A, a place that we will be reunited with those that have gone before us. You see, again, he's painting that picture of hope. He's painting that picture of assurance. He's giving us something that we can hang on to. Peter also says that that hope is given to us by the mercy of God. It's given to us by the mercy of God. It's not something that we earn or deserve. It's not something that we have to think, well, I hope that 
I'm good enough, or I, I hope my loved one was good enough. The Bible says none of us are good enough. It's God's mercy. It's God giving it to us because He wants to, because He cares about us, because He loves us. It comes about by God's mercy. It comes to us as a, as a gift of faith in, in the person of, uh, of Jesus Christ. Probably the most familiar verse of Scripture that talks about that hope uh, is John 3.16. And I use that verse regularly because it's probably the one that people are most familiar with. And so if you're familiar with John 3.16, I'll give you an opportunity. I'm going to quote it here in just a second. I'll give you the opportunity to quote it right along with me this afternoon. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the hope that the Bible gives. That's the hope that we can grab a hold of. And so my first challenge to you this afternoon is to grab a hold of that hope. Grab a hold of the living hope that Peter promises to us through faith in Jesus Christ. Having said that, I want to share just a couple of thoughts about some practical ideas. We're going to change gears a little bit. I want to share some practical ideas and some thoughts of some things that, that I think are important for all of us to grab a hold of this, this holiday season. The first one is this. Give yourself permission to grieve this holiday season. Give yourself permission to grieve. And realize that grieving does not mean that you're not spiritual. Grieving does not mean that you're weak. Grieving does not mean that you're still struggling more than you should. And I say all of those things because I've heard people say the opposite of that. I've heard people say, you know, I should be done grieving right by now. I need to move on. doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that you're struggling more than you should. I've heard people say, well, I guess I'm not very spiritual because I still grieve. It doesn't mean that. Jesus stood at the grave side of his friend who died, and guess what he did? He grieved. And you know what the people said that saw Jesus? Wow, he really loved him. And you know, your grief and my grief at the loss of a loved one isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign that we love somebody. And it's a sign that they were an important part of our lives. And we're missing them. That's all it is. Grieving is important. It's necessary for us as human beings to get through our, our, our time of loss. It's an important part of, uh, of that, uh, that struggle. It's an important part of going through this, this time of hardship. About a year ago, I may have shared this last year when I was speaking. About a year ago, this time I was talking with a fellow who had lost his son suddenly in a car accident. And we were talking about, we were talking about his struggle. And as we were talking about it, he says, you know, he said, in the, the time that I struggled, he said, the best piece of advice that I was ever given was this. And it surprised me, and it may not you, but it surprised me. He said, the best <coughs> advice anybody ever gave me was this. Embrace your grief. In other words, they were telling him, let yourself grieve. And I say that because so often I think, we get into the holiday season, and and if we've lost somebody, we tend to say, well, you know, I don't want to bring that up. Because I don't want other people to hurt. And sometimes we don't give ourselves permission to grieve. And this fellow said, you know, he said, I used to go in my bedroom, or actually the bedroom of my, my son. And he said, I used to close the door. And he said, I would stay there for hours and just bawl and grieve. Because it hurt so bad. But he said, I needed to do that to help myself to, to be able to move on. And he said, I needed to give myself that permission. And so my, my challenge to you practically is to give yourself permission to grieve this holiday season. Allow yourself to grieve. Allow yourself to mourn. It's an important part of you getting through this difficult time. Second piece of advice that, that I would give, and I think it's important as well, and that's take time to share memories 
It's time to share memories. And you might share your memories formally. You might share them informally. You might share them informally by saying in the midst of, you know, dinner. You know, I really miss Grandma's pie this Christmas or this Thanksgiving. I always look forward to that. You might say, you know, I, I miss my loved one. You know, they used to sit here and, man, they would, they would crack these jokes every year. Like, what are you saying? You're saying it's okay to share memories. You might do it more formally. You know what I love to do, and some of the families here that I've worked with this past year, I look forward to working with the family and sitting down and getting out the old picture albums. I love doing that with families. And, and I don't know, maybe, maybe the families will attest something different, but I, I, I just have a great time because usually what happens is we, we look at a picture and, and they tell a story. I remember when that picture was taken. We were doing this and I went to ride that one. And then guess what happens? We pick up another picture and the tears start to flow. And then we move to the next one. And, and I remember doing that in my own family. And it was a time of... Uh, of, of sorrow, and it was a time of joy, and it was a time that helped me to grieve. And, and so, plan to share memories. Plan to, to just share, you know, your thoughts and what you miss and what you can look forward to. You may even want to, Joey and I have done that today, and we'll do that again. You may want to light a candle and stick it in the room and say, you know, this is in memory of. You you may want to. Get out a box and get out some pieces of paper and say to everybody at, at your Thanksgiving or Christmas get together, you know, write down a memory of our loved one. What, what do you remember most? And then sit around and pull those pieces of paper out of the box and, and read them. And, and in doing that, you're remembering, you're celebrating a life. You're also grieving. But you're also including that person that you've lost in your Thanksgiving or your Christmas or your holiday celebration. And so share your memories. Give yourself permission to grieve. One more thing I want to share this afternoon, and that's this. Reach out. Reach out to other people. I don't know, you know, what your struggle is like, and, and I certainly wouldn't pretend to understand. But what I do know is that when people grieve, we tend to pull away. And we tend to want to be alone. And there's times that's good. But there's also times that we need to reach out. And there's times that we need people around us to support us and encourage us and strengthen us. And, and so if you need some time alone to grieve, then, then that's fine. But make sure you reach out to people around you. Reach out to them. Let them know what your hurt is. Let them know what your struggle is. Let them know that you need their encouragement and you need their support. Reach out to your family. Reach out to your friends. If that's not possible, reach out to reach out to a local church. I know the people in our church are excellent at reaching out and encouraging people. They're amazing. I know other churches are as well. So don't be afraid to reach out. You know, Paul, the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 15, he's talking to believers. He says, rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those that weep. And there's certainly comfort in reaching out and weeping with those around us. That's why I encourage you to gather support from your family, gather support from your friends, share your memories, give yourself permission to grieve, grab a hold of the hope that the Bible promises us, promises us in Jesus Christ. Well, let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for the opportunity to gather this afternoon. And Lord, again, you know the hurts. You know the pain that is in the hearts of each one that is here this afternoon. Lord, I pray that you would give us hope in Jesus Christ. You promised it. Lord, I pray that we would reach out and grab a hold of it. I pray, Lord, that in this holiday season that we would give ourselves permission to grieve. Lord, I pray that we would reach out to those around us. And weep together as we have need to do that. And Lord, I pray that we would include in our celebration a time informally and formally of sharing our memories and our thoughts and our stories about those that, that we've lost in this past year. Lord, give us the strength, the help, the encouragement.
encouragement and the support we need this holiday season.